Now for those of you that have saw a video of me recently that got punched in the back, let me make it clear to everyone, man. The video of me getting punched in the back was by a guy that was about 25, 26 years old. It was deliberate. I lost my temper because he punched me in the exact place where I got stabbed. You see, out on road, I look over my shoulders because I've got enemies. My PTSD kicks in. But why do I need to look over my shoulder even in the house of my God? So when I got punched, and it wasn't even a light punch, bro. The guy came, and we saw it on CCTV. The guy came, he was sneaking behind a couple of little kids that was in front of me, punched me in my back, and then acted like he was just random and just there. So when I said to you, whoever it was, own up, be a man. He didn't want to own up. Because wallah, he deserves to get smacked over. He punched me, and you know when I went into the reception? You know when I went into the side office? I started holding my nerve damage because of where he punched me. Then I have old Muslims here today. Or those Muslims online calling me every day under the sun. Continue bro, I need your good deeds. I've already committed enough sins. So continue to backbite me and continue to stand with me. Because in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your good deeds are coming on my scale. Do not be like those Muslims that you find a fault in another Muslim online and you give them the backlash and you put them down and you call them a jihad and you call them a kafir. This is not from the etiquette of a Muslim. Bro. This is not from the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, I love you all for the sake of Allah. And before I go, I want everyone to remain sitting down. I want to do a big take beer up. You already, yeah? Relax, relax. Don't stand up, don't stand up. Don't stand up. Don't stand up. What do you say? 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 Alhamdulillah, we're here. A message for those in poverty. Let's see how long they can get in trouble. Again, yeah. Again, yeah. Again, yeah. Are you not ready, yeah? No. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my three famous, famous questions, yeah. You know, ready, yeah? Three questions, yeah? But, but on one condition, on one condition. When you answer it, you answer it based on the Sit down, brother, please. Sit down. Brother, sit down, please. You will answer sit down, the brother, condition please. that inshallah wa ta'ala, you will implement this in your life. Are you ready? Yeah. Who is your Lord? Allah! Where is your deed? Yeah. And who is your prophet? Takbir! said something so beautiful he said other than Islam the biggest blessing that we ever got was brotherhood what's your brotherhood like what's your sisterhood like how are the brothers to surround you are they letting you know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you and cares for you I want you to pray your five daily prayers are the brothers around you that ask yourself this and don't lie to yourself ask yourself this if you were to die right now what are your friends gonna do are they gonna... One, one brother said they're gonna cry, trust me they're not gonna cry bro. You're young Afi, trust me. They're gonna continue with their life. Life is gonna get busy for them. They're gonna get married. They're gonna get high. they're gonna have kids. They're gonna have grandkids. They're gonna have a future. On my shoulder. You was once a name that reminisced in their mind. Now you was nothing but a memory that never ever even thought about. But look at the memory of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam More than 14,000 years later He's still in our hearts But is he in our actions? Do we follow the vision of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Based on our actions, on our etiquette, on our manners and our behavior? When was the last time that you said to your parents And this is for the grown-ups This is not for the youngsters, it's for the grown-ups 
for those of you that have a wife, for those of you that have a job, when was the last time you said to your parents, mom, dad, don't ever cook. Don't cook every Friday. Let me take you out for a takeaway. When was the last time you did that? If the answer is never, then understand and take this hadith with you today. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, it's the small things that you do that is consistent that is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Small things, even if it means you take your parents out every single week just for a takeaway. If you can't take them out, I can bring takeaway at home for them. Now I'm going to ask some of you brothers here, inshallah. We're in the middle 10 days of Ramadan. What is the one thing you still want to improve on during this month of Ramadan? You asked Ben Al-Qaeda, I want you to ask him. What do you want to, you want to improve on during this month of Ramadan? Your Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. In Surah Fatiha, as you don't know, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance every single time we decide. So if you pray your five times a day, what is it? You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance at least how many times? No, 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 no. If you recite Surah Fatiha for every Salah and you pray five times a day for every Rakha, how many times do you ask? 17. 17. Well, uh, this is why I love the youngsters, man. Right? The youth know Allah, my bad. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 17 times a day. That's if you pray your five times a day. And then what happens in the very next Surah where Allah gives you clear evidence, clear signs, and clear with light for you to take home with you. As the Father just mentioned in the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Dalik al-Kitab. This is a book that is clear, no doubts. This is a book that if you are miserable at home with your wife, then return back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're having business issues, it's because you neglected this book. You have problems with your parents because wallah you neglected this book. This book should not be on your top shelf collecting dust and you don't know the last time you opened it. And if I were to tell you right now, but right here, right in front of you, I'm going to rip this Quran to shreds. What are you going to do? You're going to get up and try to rush me, right? And I expect that from everyone. But you're doing even something worse. You're neglecting the book of People come and go. The deen of Allah flourishes. The deen of Allah has not been uh, so the deen of Allah has been made easy for you. Someone came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam oh, Rasulullah, I want to be able to enter Jannah. I want to be able to I want to be able to see the fruits of Jannah. I want to be able to follow uh, sorry, worship Allah. What do I do? Another kind of